In a potential medical breakthrough, a new cancer pill is making waves for apparently annihilating all solid tumors in early research. For more on this story, we want to welcome in founder of Atosa Therapeutics, Dr. Stephen Quay. Dr. Quay, thank you for being here. It's great to be here, Natasha. Thank you. Let's talk about this new pill. So I know that this is very early research. Uh, it showed that it can, quote, annihilate all solid tumors and leave healthy uh, tissue intact. Tell us a little more about this. In your opinion, how big of a game changer could this be? Well, I mean, I think it's it's obviously significant uh, because it not only treats cancers by killing them as opposed to just sort of putting them to sleep, but it seems to work broadly across many classes of cancers. We, we now know that cancers are not just defined by the organ where they come from, but actually by the pathways that are driving the cells to grow more rapidly, to not respect their boundaries, and to move about the body. So it's, it's a highly significant finding. We know it was developed in honor of a nine-year-old cancer patient named Anna Olivia Healy. Um, can I ask how soon until we could use the, a pill like this to help patients? What is the path forward here? Uh, so uh, the path for all drug development, same for cancer drug development, is three phases of clinical trials that can take between five and 10 years typically. And uh, it's unfortunate that it takes that long, but we have very high standards for safety and efficacy, and that's that's what comes out of that. So, uh, you know, we're now in phase two of this, which means we are treating patients, uh, but the numbers are small. Now, often with life-saving uh, drugs, like in the, in the area of oncology, the FDA will give what's called an accelerated approval. So they let you begin to give it broadly to patients while you continue to collect data. Now, if that data doesn't pan out as well as you thought, you might have to take it off the market, but it certainly allows us to get it to patients as quickly as we can. And we, when we talk about this only applying to solid tumors, I mean, what percentage of cancer patients could something like this potentially help? Well, unfortunately, solid tumors are the 80-20 of cancers. So, um, when you think of when you think of cancer, the the only ones that are not are, are blood cancers, leukemias, and then and then you know some other kinds of cancers uh, that that don't quite qualify as solid tumors. But most cancers that people know about, think about, have family members that have are solid tumors. And in the early research, any indication of um, any major issues, pitfalls, uh, side effects that people would, would contend with? So, you know, again, it's early days. Um, and so you, you don't typically see the side effects that, you know, even a 10% side effect is going to require, you know, almost 100 patients to, to happen to see that statistically. Um, so it, it's looking good early, um, and we're very excited about it. Okay. Dr. Quay, I, I know you're also aware of some of these headlines we're looking at, the rising cases of breast cancer, uh, specifically among younger adults. Why are we seeing this in this, in, in this healthy group, with this healthy population? Yeah, I mean, I think it's quite remarkable if you go back to the beginning of, of breast cancer, you know, treatments 30 or 40 years ago, um, you would it would be rare to see a woman under 50 or even 60 with breast cancer. Uh, it's a multifactorial issue. Uh, part of it is that, that girls are going through puberty earlier, and it can be one to two to even three years earlier than they did half a decade ago. Now, why is that? Well, it's probably the high uh, calorie content, the high fat content of the diet. Uh, and then the other thing is is inflammation. So all solid tumors grow, all, I misspoke, all solid tissues grow faster in an inflammatory environment. Now when a cell, when a tissue grows faster, it makes more random mistakes, it takes about eight to 10 mistakes to cause cancer. So simply being in an inflammatory environment gets, you know, gets that going. So for example, uh, alcohol uh, it does induce an inflammatory environment for the time after you've you've had it for 24 to 48 hours. So those kinds of things. So diet, uh, and, and, you know, and alcohol, and especially in women, they can lower their estrogen level by good cardiovascular exercise. And we know that estrogen drives about two out of three breast cancers. Okay, I do appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.